Here we're going to introduce the uh, field of computational chemistry. We're going to apply it to atoms, in particular the helium atom, but computational chemistry will be more important when you talk about molecules later on in the course. So what's computational chemistry all about? Well, when applied to solving the Schrodinger equation, essentially what you do is use uh, the variation method. Uh, remember the variation method is that you set up some sort of wave function that have adjustable parameters in them, and then you adjust those parameters to get a minimum energy and therefore the wave function that you get using those energy minimized parameters is the best wave function you can have and the energy you get by that calculation is the best energy by the variation theorem. All right, so the key in computational chemistry, where you use computers, is to choose your wave functions wisely. Wisely meaning you can uh, easily compute those on a computer, and you can save yourself a lot of uh, calculations if you choose the right kind of wave functions. Well, it turns out for uh, most uh, computational chemistry programs, you use either Gaussian wave functions or plane waves. Uh, Gaussian, we've uh, encountered a Gaussian before. Remember the uh, Gaussian we had when we had to multiply the wave function for the harmonic oscillator? A Gaussian generally is something like, well, let me write the general form for a Gaussian, f of x will be uh, one parameter, a1, e to the minus, let's say x minus a2, squared divided by 2 a3 squared plus a4. a1, a2, a3, and a4 are parameters which govern the shape of the Gaussian. What we had for the um, uh, harmonic oscillator was a1 was 1, a4 was 0, and a2 was 0. So this was just x squared over 2 times the standard deviation squared. All right, so what you do is you uh, model a wave function in terms of Gaussian functions. Now, you wouldn't think this would work. Why, was, why is that? Well, let's look at, for instance, the 2p. Let's draw what actually the 2p wave function looks like, the radio part of the ra wa radio. All right, so this would be all the radio part. That will be an R there. Um, the 2p starts here, goes up, and then goes back down like this. So that's the radio part of the 2p. What's this Gaussian look like? Well, let's say it's centered at zero, so we give her that, but this is what a Gaussian looks like. <laughs> oh my goodness. It doesn't look like a Gaussian is a good, uh, a good stand-in for the true atomic p orbital, for example, in the hydrogen atom. Nonetheless, uh, you can combine Gaussians and you can eliminate so many calculations of integrals and so on that even though Gaussian is a bad function, it nonetheless, um, you can uh, use it, there's computational reasons. So you use a whole bunch of Gaussians and you actually can very well uh, approximate these radial distributions uh, for the P and others that start at zero. All right, so the idea, and then plane waves, why do you use plane waves? Well, plane waves, you might recall, are waves that just go like this. And um, so why would you use something like that? Plane waves are used when you talk about solids. Uh, solids have a regular periodic array, and typically in computational chemistry you might use, uh, say, um, I don't know, a million, a million plane waves. Uh, you combine those in various ways and with adjustable parameters to represent the uh, wave functions. Uh, and the Gaussian, typically number of Gaussians for a medium-sized molecule uh, might be in the order of a few thousand uh, Gaussian functions you're combining. But the general, the overview then is you describe wave functions, a linear combination of these simple functions, and you vary the combination coefficients, how you're combining those wave functions in order to minimize the energy. Now the two major uh, ways of calculating uh, the um, or solving the Schrodinger equation for using these simple wave functions. They're the Hartree-Fock and the density functional theory. And the Nobel Prize was given for these two methods back in the late 1990s. Uh, actually, the first time a Nobel Prize was given for a computer program. So in the next two uh, mini lectures, we'll talk about the Hartree-Fock way and the density functional way of solving the Schrodinger equation uh, using the variation method.